Hey, Andrew Chelman here with MachineSkills.com. In this quick tip, I want to cover something called the record mode. Now, this is something that's actually labeled on the Machine Studio hardware, but the nice thing is it works on the Micro and the Mark II as well. You just have to know what buttons to press, and those buttons are Shift and Grid. So if you press those, you can see the screen shows we're now in recording mode. Now, first of all, we can see with this F1 button up here, go ahead and toggle the metronome on and off. Now, that is the exact same as pressing Shift and Play, and you can see those are linked together. Um, also, we have this feature to change the actual level of the metronome. So say you're working on a really quiet piece, the metronome is really loud and distracting, go ahead and turn that down. Now vice versa, if you have a really full sounding mix and the metronome isn't quite cutting through, go ahead and increase the volume and that will help you keep everything in line. Now scrolling over with the arrows here, we see we have a time option for the metronome as well. And this is going to change the time signature. So this comes in handy if you have really slow tempo. Um, say you're working with a pretty slow song and the metronome is playing, but it's pretty hard to get your timing in line because the metronome has these big gaps in between each click. Now if you go ahead and change the time signature here, that will make your metronome play more often, and then that will help you keep your timing uh, right in line. Um, so it's a nice feature for, for, slow, for slow tracks that you're working on. Go ahead and change this and get more clicks and help you keep everything um, sound, sounding like you want it to. Now go ahead and scroll over again we have an auto on feature here. Now what this is going to do is a link your metronome to the record button here. Um, so first of all, we have this off option here and this is just going to make the metronome only linked to our, our F1 button up here or likewise the shift and play. Um, so with this, it's only going to turn on when you have it toggled on and it'll always be off when you have it off. Makes sense, right? Um, but if we go ahead and turn it on to record, um, what this will do is play the metronome, even if it's off, it's going to play the metronome when your record button is enabled. So basically this gives you a way to have the metronome playing just when you're recording, and then when just playing back, no record button is enabled, the metronome will be off. Now I use this all the time, because when I'm recording, I want the metronome to be playing, I want to hear that click track. But when I'm just playing it back, maybe I'm listening for the mix, I don't want that metronome getting in the way of things. So um, this is a really nice way to prevent having to turn it on and off every time, and just have it only linked to recording. Um, so that is very useful there. I use that all the time. And then finally, or one more, we have a uh, count and length option here. Now this is tied to our, our count in here which with the shift and record buttons here. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it gives you a specified amount of time before recording begins. Um, so if you have this on one bar, it'll give you one bar and then recording starts. But if you feel a little bit rushed, go ahead and increase that and that will give you more time before recording starts and you should be uh, prepared and ready to go. And then finally, we have our quantize mode here. Now this is a little bit difficult to explain, so I'll try to keep it simple. Um, first of all, none. This is not going to do any automatic quantization. This is what you're familiar with. But we have two different modes here. First of all, we have our record mode. Now what this is going to do is not affect any live playing, but it'll automatically quantize the notes. So the second time the loop comes around, you'll hear that the notes are automatically quantized, locked right into the grid. So again, not going to change how it actually sounds when you play it, but it'll change how it records because it'll be recorded exactly into a quantized grid. Now, if you switch it over to the play slash record mode, it's going to not only do what I just talked about in the, in the other mode, but it's also going to quantize them as you play it. So you actually hear weird differences, and that's because it's moving those notes in real time to the nearest place on the grid. Um, so if, if you're off playing it, it's going to fix that and it's going to quantize the actual audio signal. And as well as doing that, like I said, it's going to quantize them as it records into the sequencer. So you're left with quantized sound the first time around, as well as quantized sequences. Um, so that is a, a, a um, interesting option there if you're playing live, or if you just want things to be automatically quantized, um, go ahead and select the appropriate mode there. Um, so with that, that covers the record mode. There's quite a few features in that little hidden shortcut there. Um, just figured I'd show you what it's all about. Hopefully this is something new that you can use. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next week's video.